Hello everyone! So I've seen this question come up a lot lately and it seems super common, especially this time of year. That question is, how do I get started in FPV? So maybe you watched some DRL on ESPN, or maybe you came across a Mr. Steel video on YouTube, or maybe you were just browsing Reddit and you saw some awesome FPV video reach the front page. Whatever it was that brought you here, let me welcome you to the hobby. It can be frustrating at times, but it is worth it. So you might be wondering, how do you get started in this hobby? Well, my suggestion is the very first step you should take is you need to buy a good radio. The number one recommended radio that I see online is the Tyrannus QX7. It's reasonably priced and you'll be able to find lots of support for it from other people in the hobby, from websites, online, everywhere. But if you do go that route, be aware that uh, I don't believe the current version comes with a battery tray. You can't use AA batteries in it or anything like that. You need to purchase a separate battery pack for it. You may also be more comfortable with a video game style controller instead of the more traditional form factor that the Tyrannus QX7 comes in. In that case, you might want to consider using the X-Lite radio. It uses the same protocol and is compatible with everything that the QX7 is compatible with. But it's much smaller and, you know, it's in the form factor of more like an Xbox controller. With this radio, you also need to do some research and pick out the right batteries because it uses very specific batteries. If you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, you might want to consider the Nirvana radio. It's a little bit more expensive than the other two options, and it uses a different protocol called the FlySky protocol. So it's not compatible with the exact same hardware that the other two radios are. The main reason this might come up to be an issue is that in the super tiny, small uh, whoop class drones, they usually come with built-in receivers, and most of those will come as compatible with the FR Sky, so the Tyrannus FR Sky protocol. Sometimes they also come in a version that works with the Fly Sky protocol with the Nirvana radio, but not always. So you do limit yourself a little bit in that case. But if you do see yourself in the future shooting for long range flying, the Nirvana radio is a great option because it's compatible out of the box with the extremely popular TBS Crossfire system for going really long range. Uh, the other two radios, you can make it work, but I believe you need to do some hardware modifications. All right, so the next step, once you've gotten the radio, hook it up to your computer, find a flight simulator that works in your system and start practicing. Back when I started, I chose the free version of DRL and that's no longer available as far as I know. I also use the free version of FPV Freerider and I follow Joshua Bardwell's playlist for learning how to fly. It was a bit frustrating at first, but it didn't take too long to get the hang of it. Today there are a number of great simulators like Liftoff and Velocidrone and Rotor Rush and others. The more you can practice in the flight simulator and get your first crashes out of the way, the better. Then when you get to the real thing, you'll be much more prepared. None of the flight simulators will perfectly replicate what a real flight is like, so don't worry about it getting all the settings exactly right. You're mostly building up muscle memory and hopefully building good habits that you'll use once you get the drone in the air. Okay, so as you are building your skills in the simulator, you should also be doing some more research. Subscribe to Joshua Bardwell and UAV Futures on YouTube, and check out as many of their videos as you can. I'd also suggest watching Mr. Steele's How to FPV playlist. Absorb everything and you will learn a ton. You might also want to consider checking out the Quad Camp Twitch streams, or FPV-related Discord channels, and the FPV-related subreddits. Don't be afraid to get out there, get involved, and ask questions. All right, at this point, if you've done some research, you must have a good idea of what you want from your first FPV drone. Maybe you decided you wanted a small, tiny, whoop-class drone that you can fly indoors and it fits in the palm of your hand. Or maybe you decided you really want to build that 5-inch drone you can put your GoPro on and fly in the park. Both of those are great options. Just be aware that the whoop class drones are a little easier to get started with since they cost less, generally don't break when you crash them, and since you can fly inside, you're more likely to fly them, even if it's cold or wet outside. If you do opt to build a 5-inch drone, I highly suggest taking a look at Joshua Bardwell's FPV shopping list. He goes through all the components you need and gives great explanations for why he recommends the things he does.
At this point, you should also buy a soldering iron and get familiar with it. You probably want to do some practice soldering if you've never done it before, so you're not going to be doing your first soldering you know, on your drone the first time. The last thing you want is for a poor solder joint to fail while your 5-inch drone is zipping across the sky and it'll fall out of the sky and who knows what will happen. All right, the next step is the one that really puts the FPV into the hobby, and that's the goggles. Most of the pilots you see will be using fairly small, lightweight goggles made by brands like Fat Shark or Amway. While they're great options, they're also quite expensive, especially for someone who's just starting out in the hobby and not too sure how, uh, how serious they are about it. So that's why my suggestion is to consider getting the less expensive, bigger box-style goggles. And as it happens, I'm still using my first pair of box goggles that I got almost two years ago. Sure, they may look silly on my head while I'm flying, but they work great. They have a large, bright, high-quality screen, and they get the job done nicely. Also, if you do outgrow them, they make great passenger goggles to let your friends and family come along for a ride with you sometime. All right, so then the question is, which box goggles should you get? Well, the goggles I started out with are no longer for sale, so I would suggest the EV800Ds. They get good reviews and have the ability to record your footage with the built-in DVR and have diversity receivers in them, which means you can use two antennas to get a better signal. And that's pretty much it. Now you have all the parts you need to get started in FPV. So get out there and enjoy the heck out of it.